and we're, we always are looking for new guests. If you want to be a guest on the show, call us at 276-656-3900, and, um, and a good chance you'll be on. I mean, you have to be able to be able to get into discussion. I think it's always nice to have a, a fresh inside, a fresh pair of eyes yeah. as compared to, you know, what, what we got going right. on. It's always nice And if you nice disagree with us, house. if you disagree with us more, it's more chances you'll be on the show. <laughs> I'll give you the little trick here. I mean, you have, to be, you have to be able to argue and you have to be able to be a little more disagreeable to make the dialogue kind of interesting. All right? Cool. I agree And, with and that. if you're normal and boring, stay home. <laughs> oh, wow. Can I time. have the day off next Monday? <laughs> <laughs> See you next time. Hey there, you've got yourself a terrible... Extra, extra, read all about it. Headlines, tell me, have you heard it? Headlines, read all about it, baby. Headlines, headlines, headlines. Yeah. Real Local, WGSR 47.1 in high definition. The views expressed on this program do not necessarily reflect the views of the station, its employees, or ownership. Thanks for joining me tonight. I am Johnny Robertson, and we are on a special tent edition of A Word from the Lord. And we really do appreciate you being with us tonight. We are in the midst of what we believe tonight is critical, critical information for our community. We have a tent up in Eden, North Carolina. We have a good uh, group of visitors that came in. We have people that traveled all the way from, uh, let's see, we had someone, uh, t a couple traveled all the way from Raleigh, I mean, so, I'm sorry, Cary, North Carolina tonight. Uh, one lady was 83 years old that came in, and uh, we were so glad to see visitors, uh, persons who are not members of the Lord's Church, and they come to hear uh, what the preacher Fulton Smith had to say, and we're so glad that they're willing to come out and uh, uh, have a listen. And you know, that's, that's what it is, folks. It's, uh, this is a meeting of investigation. You know, when you have a, a meeting like this, we're trying our very best to get people to investigate what they're doing, uh, to whom they're, they're listening, from whom they have received their message. We have critical information tonight that is going to I think cause you to be very interested. I call it the strange factor. This is so strange to me that individuals today are not questioning the, the source of their information. We had a great show last night, very, very, uh, I think, telling in regard to what people will believe and things of that nature. And as I mentioned, our tent is set up at the Eden Mall that is right beside Belk, uh, I, I said last night, if you don't know where it is, ask your wife. She Generally, people know, the women know where Belk is. And you just can't miss the tent. If you were to go in, say, for instance, you know the Fisherman's Galley, um, or you know uh, Meadow Lane, I believe, is the street that goes across there. It's the only, if I can remember, it's the only overpass there is in Eden. Uh, if you're headed towards uh, Martinsville on... Uh, uh, highway 14 or 87, I believe those highways, whatever the highway is that goes right through Eden when you're leaving Reedsville. Uh, what'd you say? 87. As you're traveling down 87 headed towards Martinsville, there, there's an overpass. That is your exit. And you pull up off of that exit and there's the tent, just a big uh, uh, purple and white tent sitting out there in the middle of the field right beyond the parking lot on the Eden Mall. And uh, visitors are welcome. Now tomorrow night I'll be closing out the, the meeting and uh, I don't really expect this to be the case, but you never know. Some individuals want to come out and be able to be in a uh, situation where I'm preaching a full-length gospel sermon. And so I generally don't do too many of our local tent meetings. We generally bring other individuals in. We kind of believe that a variety is the spice of life, and we like to have a variety of individuals. And Fulton Smith, as we said tonight, is from uh, uh, South Carolina, and he's preaching and doing a fantastic job. Melvin... Uh, Sap came in last week at the South Central School of Preaching. He's the director and brought all the guys in from um, that school, and they door knocked with us, and, and some of them have stayed. And So it's been a great week, and uh, I'll close out tomorrow night. So if you didn't come to the tent any time uh, so far, you hope that you will come tomorrow night, and we're going to have a great lesson. We're going to talk about heartfelt religion and sincerity and truth, and you don't want to miss this lesson because, my friends, everything depends upon whether we get this message right or not. Tonight, strange factor. I, I'm just uh, overwhelmed when I think about individuals in our area, how easily it is, how easily they are hoodwinked. And I just don't know any other way 
to say, uh, to, to tell it than to put, uh, put it out there like that. It reminds me of Jeremiah chapter 5, verse 30. A wonderful and horrible thing is committed in the land. The prophets prophesy falsely. The priests bear rule by their means. And my people love to have it so. And what will you do in the end thereof? What's going to happen in a setting like this? Now, in Jeremiah's days, folks, it was very bad. The end of this setting was is that God allowed Israel's enemies to come in and completely destroy the people of Israel, God's own people, persons who He had made a particular covenant with. Now, God had covenant relationship with other individuals too, but He had a very specified covenant with the house of Israel in that they would be the people through whom the Messiah would come. And so God has now decided that they are so um, unwilling to listen to the truth that the prophets prophesy falsely. And you know why they do that. They prophesy in such a way as to line their own prophet pockets. The priests bear rule by their means. The priests are not willing to speak up for God and not willing to speak up for the poor and the fatherless and the widow and the stranger. But they're more inclined to do things that has to do with making money for themselves. And he said, my people love it. The people love it. Because, you know, when, when you have prophets like this, and you have priests like this, they generally give the people a stamp of approval. Peace, peace, everything is good, is what they will say. And so when we go into the Bible and we start looking at this, and that's what we really need to do in Jeremiah, if we look at Jeremiah chapter 23, verse 21, I want you to notice what the, the Bible says there, how far Jeremiah comes from Jeremiah 5. I have not sent these prophets, yet they ran. I have not spoken to them, yet they prophesy. But if they had stood in my counsel and caused my people to hear my words, then they should have turned them from their evil way and from the evil of their doings. You know what, folks? We live in an evil time. We live, live in an evil country. You know, today I was watching one of the broadcasts from this station at 4 o'clock, and um, they were showing the tweets that come from different areas and the hateful, uh, hate-filled and, and uh, bitter and, and um, resentful tweets that come out of different places in the nation. Now, the hot spot was really on the East Coast. And then once they got down and began to be very specific about what people were saying over their phones, on their Twitter, Twitter account, People actually tell, they get an account and they tweet in, they actually type in things that they're doing and things they're feeling and how they feel about this or that. And some of the most hateful tweets were coming from our local area. Our area is filled with, with uh, hateful, hopeless, resentful individuals. And why is it this way? You know why it's this way, folks? You don't have peace and joy and happiness when you have preachers telling you everything you do is okay. You know, I hear people talking about it all the time. I don't like hellfire and brimstone preaching. Okay, how about you have prophets and priests tell you things that you love to hear and actually tell you that you're okay when you're not? You know what that actually leads to? If I tell you that you're living in adultery and it's okay, you know what we're going to actually have? We're going to have more adultery. If I tell you that shacking up and sleeping with somebody is okay, guess what we're going to have? We're going to have more of it. We're going to have more individuals who are doing that very thing, and it's not going to get any better. If I tell you it's okay for you to, to play the lottery, guess what? You're going to have more individuals who are taking money from their children, taking money from their household and from their wife, from uh, their household needs, and playing the lottery. If I tell you it's okay, it's going to breed more of it. Don't you get this? When individuals prophesy falsely and you bear rule by your own means, in other words, you never will speak out what the Bible actually has to say, and you give individuals a pass, it simply creates more of it. Don't you realize you need someone like uh, the, the Church of Christ in your area? A little leaven leavens the whole lump. We're the salt of the earth. Don't you realize that a little bit of salt will influence? Don't you, don't you think you need to hear? Doesn't your, don't your children need to hear on, at least from somebody that fornication is wrong, shacking up, sleeping around, that's wrong? that all this stuff that these Hollywood people do is wrong? Same-sex marriage is wrong? Don't you need to hear that? If we don't hear preaching on that, guess what will happen? If you tell everybody it's okay and the churches are telling people same-sex marriage is okay, if you tell people it's, on, it's okay, guess what we're going to have? We're going to have more of it. That's just what happens. And so 
Jeremiah is saying, look, God said, I did not send these prophets, yet they ran. I have not spoken, yet they prophesy. And what about the people? The people love to have it so. The people get, love to be unrestrained. But you know what? It's producing all kinds of bad results. You know, tonight, I want to remind you, too, of the events associated with Jesus being on the scene in uh, the Bible days. I want you to think about this. Now, I know that our television program has... Uh, has generated a lot of um, comments in the last few days. I talked to uh, uh, Johnny Dyer's wife just before I came on television tonight, and she told me that people told her that we were talking about them and that uh, there was a lot of discussion. I want you to notice this. There was much murmuring among the people concerning Jesus. The pronoun him is talking about Jesus. For some said he's a good man. Others said nay, but he deceiveth the people. People from South Carolina saw the show last night and they said they could not believe that somebody would stand up and tell the truth about this guy that was promoting a book that has things in it that we're supposed to do, but there is no scriptural reference to, for it. Now, let me see uh, tonight. I forgot to uh, actually bring that, uh, that program up as I was uh, beginning my, my broadcast. And so let me do that tonight. Let me get up uh, what we were looking at last night and uh, have it up along with what we're doing tonight so we can make sure that we uh, all are on the same page in regard to the discussion. Last night we showed a book that a particular preacher in this area was willing to, has been promoting, I'd say he's been promoting it. I've been in this area for some, uh, on this television broadcast station here in Reedsville now for 11 years. And, uh, no, let me see, uh, 2004 to 2013, um, that's about, what is that? Uh, did you say nine? Okay, from 2004 to 2013. So uh, nine years. Uh, we got, glad we got some folks that can add in the control room. Nine years. So I got one of these booklets that uh, we're talking about. When I first came into this area, I had it in a drawer in my desk, and I got it out today to look at it to compare it with the one that I got Sunday. And lo and behold, it was from the same preacher. This preacher has been poisoning this area for at least nine years that I know of. And so tonight, when I called his wife, she threatened me. Now, you might say, well, uh, you know, you, you might question whether or not it was a really, really a threat, and I'll, I'll let you listen to it, and you basically uh, can tell me what you think about what she said. Uh, let's see if I can pull this up here right quick. This is the phone call. Now, part of the phone call, I didn't have my... A speaker on on my phone, so I'm just going to. You're all you're going to hear is my voice, but at the same time, we're going to be able to hear. Uh, at, at the end of it, we're going to be able to hear her voice. So, what I'm saying is, is that this individual, Johnny Dyer, who is the promoter of this booklet, as I said, he's been putting this out. So-called Pastor Johnny Dyer, and here's his phone number. He he publishes his phone number. I challenge you to call Johnny Dyer tonight. Six three two five eight one zero. And as I talked to her tonight about this idea that we just put forth about somebody uh, saying something that God did not send them to say, that God is not pleased with this, listen to the conversation. Yes, I just wanted him to know that he's going to be the subject of our TV program tonight. Yes, he was. It was amazing what some people said. Did you hear it? Yeah. Yeah. Did you hear what the man said? Oh. It's weekend. Well, but, what? Uh, uh, let me uh, say something to you. Okay. Yes, the Bible says not to touch, touch God's anointed. You better listen to that. Okay, now what was going on behind the scenes is she said that they did not hear the, the uh, program, but some individuals actually told them that uh, what was being said. And so at the end of it, you heard what she said. She said, you better not touch God's anointed. Or do you know what the Bible says? Touch not God's anointed. And you better listen to that. Well, you know what the implication is, folks. The implication tonight is, is that somehow or other, God is going to do something to me because Johnny Dyer is anointed. Now, let me ask you this question. Is Johnny Dyer able to do what the prophets did, even though the people love to have it, 
is he able to do that and be God's anointed? It looks like to me, you know, she's quoting out of the Old Testament. It looks like to me that Jeremiah would say that this is a horrible thing that is taking place. Well, what is a horrible thing? Prophets prophesy falsely. Well, let me ask you the question tonight. Is it true or is it false that this passage is in the New Testament? that there is a passage that encourages you as a lost person, any lost person, in particular the gentleman that he preached his sermon, his funeral last Sunday, was a lost person. Johnny Dyer went in and told this man all he needed to do was pray the sinner's prayer and he would be saved. Now, is that true or is it false? Now, if it is false, if there is no place in the New Testament after the cross where men went out and began to preach the gospel that we're to preach today, if no one told anyone to pray in order to have their sins forgiven initially, in other words, a lost person who had never come into relationship with God, who had shunned God, had shunned the gospel, now they're about to die. Is there anyone in any kind of setting that the apostles or any of those individuals told to pray this kind of prayer? And the answer is false. It is false. You notice that even Johnny Dyer knows it's false because he did not include a scripture on these two pages. Pages 26 and 27 are the only pages in this book that do not have a scripture associated with it, except for the pages where he advertises himself and gives his phone number. So it is false. I went to see him to see what he had to say about the fact that he left out the scripture. And all he did was simply, uh, I, I say, be belligerent towards me, poke me several times, and uh, told me that I wasn't a saved person and all of that. So the horrible thing we haven't really covered, though. Here is the horrible thing that I want you to uh, be able to, to hear tonight, and that is what took place last night on our television broadcast. And so I'm going to pull that down tonight. We're going to let you listen to that as well. This is the event that took place on the broadcast he was last alive night. at one point. And, and this is what I say is a very horrible thing. This is uh, something that if you had told me that this would happen in our viewing area, I would have told you it will never happen. What I'm going to let you listen to tonight, I would have told you would never happen. There is no way that anybody would ever take something that is false and say, I will take the false over the Bible any day and you can take your job or your, your ministry and I'll let this gentleman end up uh, completing that. So take a listen. Then he died as a child is what he's talking about. You're on a word from the Lord. Yes, caller. Uh, is this Johnny? This Johnny. Johnny, I want to know, uh, I'm, I'm tuning in a little bit late. I'd like to know what uh, Johnny Dyer has done to you. Johnny Dyer has taught false doctrine, which he has done it to the Lord. I'm defending the Lord and his church and his word. Johnny Dyer has done it to the Lord. I'm just defending the Lord. Well, I've always respected you and, and listened to all your programs on Channel 5, but I, I'll tell you, I, I, don't, I don't like you uh, talking about Johnny Dyer. Johnny Dyer is a man of God. Johnny Dyer is a liar. He put out this book and it says that you can be saved by praying this prayer. And sir, until he puts a scripture with that, that's a lie. I'll give you $1,000 to clear Johnny Dyer's name tonight. How about that? $1,000 and you can clear Johnny Dyer's name. And until then, Johnny Dyer is nothing but a lying false teacher who is telling people to be saved by praying a prayer that's not in the New Testament. And sir, I'm willing to lose your friendship over the gospel any day. Now, you should take this up with Johnny Dyer. He put this book out and he says you can be saved by saying a prayer that's not in the Bible and that's a flat out lie. Now, you're going to defend a lie or you're going to defend Jesus Christ and his word. Well, do you, think he th do you think maybe he thinks he's doing the right thing? It don't matter if he thinks he's doing the right thing. A lie is a lie. Do you tell your children when they say, well, I thought I was doing the right thing by lying to you. You don't let them get away with that, sir. That's a terrible argument. It doesn't matter if he thinks he's doing the right thing. Paul, Saul of Tarsus, thought he thought he was doing the right thing, and Jesus set him straight in a heartbeat. I mean, sir, we got to get down to brass tacks here. $1,000 for you to clear Johnny Dyer's name. Johnny Dyer has lied to this community and said you can pray a prayer that's not in this book and it don't matter if it's in the book or not. And I had, to, I had the uh, conviction and the concern for Johnny Dyer to chase him down, spent my whole morning chasing him down to give him a chance 
to put things right in this book. Now, sir, you ought to defend Jesus rather than a preacher who's telling stuff that's not in the Bible. Well, I don't know. I, I tuned in, like I said, I tuned in late. I grew up with Johnny Dyer and all the Dyers, and I, I respect them all and you respect res everything they say and do. You respect people who will say things that's not in the Bible? Can you tell me where the sinner's prayer is in the Bible? No, I, I'm not that, no. Well, would you call Johnny Dyer up and, and we'll split the $1,000 between you and him and he can give it to us tonight? Would you do that for his reputation, please? I'll give you his number. Here's his I, know, I know his number. All right, well, we'll give it to everybody else. 632-5810. Somebody call up Johnny Dyer and let's clear his reputation tonight. He can either put a scripture with this prayer or he can admit that it's a lie inserted by him and the people who printed this tract, Sowers of Seed, Fort Worth, Texas. Now, somebody has lied to our community. And, sir, do you want to be part of this lie or do you want to be part of clearing it up? I can't get involved with that part of it. Oh, my, my, sir, you're not my friend. I'm not. If you're going to protect a lie, you won't get involved in clearing it up? You, you either have, Jesus says you're either for me or against me. There is no middle ground. Look at this. Do you know, do you, let me tell you something, Mr. Robson. You can't tell me nothing, sir, unless you tell me out of the Bible. So you better get your Bible ready. All right, now you tell me something out of the Bible. I'm listening. There you, there, there you go. I'm listening. You tell me something out of the Bible. I'm, I'm going to tell you something. You messing with the tires. You think I'm scared of these people. And let me tell you something. Oh, boy. They're the most respected people in this Rockingham County. And and you are stepping on some hot feet and red toes. All right. And I'm not scared one bit, sir, because the Bible says that you ought to either be for Jesus or against him. Look at this. He is that he is not he that is not with me is against me. Now are you with Jesus tonight? Jesus did not authorize a sinner's prayer. Are you for the sinner's prayer or against it? I'm for it. You are as just as bad as Johnny Dyer. You're supporting a lie. And you know what, sir? I'm not, and I'm not scared one bit, sir, because the Bible says that you ought to either be for Jesus or against him. Look at this. He is that, he is not, he that is not with me is against me. Now, are you with Jesus tonight? Jesus did not authorize a sinner's prayer. Are you for the sinner's prayer or against it? I'm for it. Now, folks, I don't really know how you can get any plainer than that. I ask him, is he for the sinner's prayer or for Jesus? Are you for Jesus or are you for the sinner's prayer? And he said, I am for the sinner's prayer. Jesus did not tell anyone, he did not tell his disciples to tell anyone that they should go out and tell people to say the sinner's prayer. Now, I mean, either, either this is what Jesus said to do or it isn't. Let's see what the Bible says. Mark 16, verse 15. Now, we have Jesus sending out His apostles. Look what He said. Go you into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be damned. Now, I want you to think about this. If Jesus had wanted them to go out and tell people to say a prayer would he not have included that somewhere in the instruction that he gave to his disciples as he was leaving this earth? Matthew chapter 28, verse 18, Jesus came and spake unto them. Last thing he said, all power is given unto me in heaven and earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Now watch this teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the world. So he said, He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be damned. Go into all the world and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Teach all things. Teach them to observe all things which I have commanded you. Where did Jesus command the apostles to tell anyone that they were to say the sinner's prayer. Let's put up our phone lines and we'll let our community get, it, get involved because somebody might actually think they know that scripture. In the last account that Jesus has in the book of Luke, Luke chapter 24, 44, and he said unto them, these, these are the words which I spake unto you while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled which are written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me. Then opened he their understanding that they might understand the scriptures. He said to them, 
Thus it is written, and thus it behooved Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day. Now watch this. That repentance and remission of sin should be preached in His name among all nations beginning at Jerusalem. Now what do you have? He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Mark 16, 15 and 16. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be damned. Repentance and remission of sins should be preached in His name among all nations beginning at Jerusalem. So you're to preach to them that they are to repent in order that their sins are to be removed. You're to teach them that uh, they are to uh, baptize all nations in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Now where is the scripture where Jesus told His disciples to go into all the world and to, to tell individuals that they need to preach the sinner's prayer? So let's go to the account where Saul says that what he was told to do. In Acts chapter 26, notice this. Jesus told Saul of Tarsus, Acts 26, 16, Rise and stand upon thy feet, for I have appeared unto thee for this purpose, to make thee a minister and a witness, both of the things which thou hast seen and of the things, which, things in which I will appear unto thee. Acts chapter 26, 16, Delivering thee from the, Gentile, from the people and from the Gentiles, unto whom now I send thee. Okay, we're fixing to send Paul out now to open their eyes, to turn them from darkness to light, from the power of Satan unto God, that they may receive forgiveness of sins and an inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith, and to open their eyes, uh, excuse me, whereupon uh, King Agrippa, I see, uh, to open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan unto God, that they may receive forgiveness of sins and an inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith that is in me. And Agrippa... I was not disobedient unto that heavenly vision. Now, what did Paul tell the individuals then? But I showed first unto them in Damascus and Jerusalem throughout all the coast of Judea and then to the Gentiles that they should repent and turn to God and do works meet or suitable for repentance. So you have Paul doing the same thing. Paul is turning the people from darkness to light. Paul is telling them that they need to turn from the power of Satan unto God, that they may receive the forgiveness of sins. Well, how are they going to do that? Well, Paul said that he showed them that they had to repent and do works meet for repentance. Well, what did they have to do? Well, Paul and Peter and the other disciples all preached the same thing. They had the same commission. They had the same marching orders that Paul had. And they told people that they must believe. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. They must repent. That repentance and remission of sins would begin, be preached in His name beginning at Jerusalem. Matthew, uh, Luke chapter 24 verse 46. And that they must be baptized in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. And then they would teach them all things that He had commanded them. In all of that teaching, there is not one single place. As a matter of fact, we offered uh, $1,000 last night for anybody could give the scripture where these individuals were given the uh, authorization, the command to go and tell people to pray for their salvation. It's just not in the New Testament. Well, what we went one better than that, folks. We went to Mr. Dyer himself because I actually thought that it could be the case that he had made a typo. So what we have tonight is we have the video or the audio of where I went to see him as well. Hold on just a second. We'll let you hear that as well. Let me just make sure all of these are lining up. And um, let's get this out in front of us so that we can play it together. Now, there's his book, and we want to make sure that there was no typo. So I came upon Mr. Dyer uh, yesterday somewhere before noon, and uh, I don't think that uh, uh, there's anybody that's going to say that I did anything wrong by following up on him. As a matter of fact, I'm doing this community a favor. If you run around saying that people can be saved in this fashion, and it's not in the Bible then someone ought to do something because, as Jeremiah said, this is a uh, horrible, this is actually a horrible thing. And now I know it's going to be the case that some individuals are going to murmur. Notice this. In John chapter 7, verse 12, look what the Bible says. There was much murmuring among the people concerning him. Some said, he's a good man. Others said, nay, he deceives the people. Howbeit no man spake openly of him for fear of the Jews. Now, we actually cannot get any of these preachers who oppose us and call us the devil and everything else. We have uh, Connie Earls. They'll be discussing him tonight after, the, after this broadcast. Connie Earls were saying that we're just troublemakers and, 
uh, that we're, they all were saying that we're false prophets and stuff like that. Well, you know what? Why don't y'all, here, here's what we're willing to do. We're willing to let you come on television and do the community a favor. Wouldn't it be better if you came on a live television broadcast and showed the community where we're teaching falsely? I mean, you going around talking to your church and the few people that listen to you and say that we're the Church of Christ and the preachers in the Church of Christ are false teachers, you know, you're, you only have a limited audience. We're willing to open up our audience to your voice. How about that? We'll buy extra airtime so that we can make sure that we advertise it and everybody is sitting uh, ready to hear Connie Earls or Johnny Dyer to present to the community that I'm a false teacher, ever learning, never coming to the truth, and, and not even saved. We'll produce the airtime so that he can have the entire Rockingham County, uh, Henry County, Pennsylvania County, Caswell County, and over into Greensboro, I guess Guilford County, will allow him to be able to reach all of those counties with his message that we're false teachers and show where he believes that we're false teachers. And the only catch, the only catch is that we get to come on behind him. We'll let him go first. We'll come on behind him and show where we believe that he has actually misused the Bible, where in fact he is a false teacher. Now, folks, that's fair, isn't it? Tell you what we would do. I would do the same thing if he would offer me the same kind of opening. If they offered me a chance where, you know what, I would do this. If they offered me 10 minutes on a program to answer them when they speak for 50 minutes, I would do it. I would be willing to let them tell the community for 50 minutes that I'm a false teacher and I'll take 10 minutes and answer them. That's all it would take is 10 minutes to answer them. You know what I would say in the first 10 minutes of Johnny Dyer's speech? The first thing I would say is there's no such thing as a Baptist church in the New Testament. And then I would go to Galatians chapter 1 verse 6 and I would basically read this. I marvel that you are so soon removed from him that called you under the grace of Christ unto another gospel. Let me tell you something, folks. The gospel that Paul preached did not contain a Baptist faith. Baptist doctrine, Baptist church, none of that. And it sure didn't contain a sinner's prayer. See, that's why they're scared. The gospel does not contain their doctrine. It's another gospel. And then Paul said, which is not another, but there'll be some, some that trouble you and pervert the gospel of Christ. These guys have perverted the gospel of Christ. How can you sit tonight and think you're going to heaven in a church that's not in the New Testament? believing a lie about how to be saved? I mean, why do you think? Think about it. Just for a minute, think about it. Why did Johnny Dyer and these folks in Fort Worth who printed this, why did they omit the scripture for the sinner's prayer? I mean, you've got all of this money tied up in this track and this book booklet and you're handing it out everywhere and you go through 25 pages and you give scriptures about your assurance for salvation and when you get down to what you do for salvation, you leave out the scripture. Think about it. Why did they leave out the scripture? Because there is no scripture. There is no scripture for this practice. It's a lie. It is the devil's lie and it is designed to make you feel good about the fact that you don't have to do anything in order to be saved. Didn't Paul tell them, didn't Jesus tell Saul of Tarsus, I want you to tell them to repent and turn and do works meet for righteousness. Oh, well, Johnny Dyer says you don't have to do anything. All you need to do is just say this prayer. Well, that's something. And do you know this contradicts Baptist doctrine anyway? Baptists teach that you're saved by faith only. Well, this is faith plus a prayer. So it's not even faith only anymore. And not only that, it doesn't have a scripture to back it up. Faith only doesn't have a scripture either. We'll give you $1,000 for faith only. See, that's $2,000 you could get tonight. $1,000 for the scripture that says you're saved by faith only. We had a PhD named A.C. Smith come on here and have a discussion with me. And a PhD in the Southern Baptist Church couldn't come up with the scripture that says you're saved by faith only. He had to apologize and actually admit that there's not one single time that it's mentioned in the Bible. It's not mentioned in the Bible that you can be saved by faith only. But in fact, the Bible alluding to the fact that you uh, are supposed to be uh, involved in um, in, in uh, doing something besides faith only is mentioned several times. Now, guys, I actually uh, fooled around and uh, unplugged my computer there uh, as a result of having it plugged in too tight. So we're going to let that come back up. So here's where we are. We have all of these individuals that are actually telling us all of these things that are not in the Bible 
And why, oh why, why friends, am I the bad guy in this picture? Why is it that you won't say like Jeremiah said? I know there's some people out there that are saying it. They're saying, man, a horrible thing is going on. Johnny Robertson and the guys in the Church of Christ have demonstrated that the Baptists at Mayfield Baptist Church and other Baptists are going around saying that people can say the sinner's prayer and yet it's not in the Bible. And a guy last night actually said that he would take the sinner's prayer over Jesus' words and that I better watch out. And Johnny Dyer's wife then says that, that uh, the Bible says to touch not God's anointed and I better listen to that. Let me tell you something, my friends. Johnny Dyer is not God's anointed. Johnny Dyer is a person who is preaching the devil's doctrine. And I, as, as we just said a moment ago, I've been on here for nine years over in Martinsville since 1997, invited over to the, to the Star News Corporation, which was uh, Channel 6 back then in 2000 or 2001, one or the other. So we've been associating uh, with these folks and presenting the gospel on their station all these years. And, you know, somebody might say, well, you had cancer and that was God telling you that you should stop talking about these preachers. Well, it only took me eight months to get over stage three cancer into my lymph nodes. It was actually touching seven lymph nodes. It only took me eight months to get over that. And I was introduced to one of the best hospitals in the United States. And now I go around telling people about that great hospital and helping people get into it. Now, how is that uh, God's paying me back for touching the anointed? It sounds like to me that in fact, rather than that being the case, that I got an opportunity to uh, maybe see what it's like to go through the valley of the shadow of death and to give me an opportunity to see what it's like to be near death and to get a chance to trust God even when other individuals are telling you all around that, you know, your life could be over. So don't think, folks, that uh, that, that little episode uh, of, of having cancer was God telling me that I should not do what I'm doing. You know, the way I looked at that is that, in fact, it was a, an opportunity for me to see how brief life is rather than uh, an opportunity or, or a, a warning that I should worry about touching God's anointed. So, you see, it, it didn't stop me. As a matter of fact, it made me realize that I could only have maybe five or six years. When you get right down to it, I may only have a short time to be involved in the ministry and maybe it should be the case that uh, I should think about the direction of my life and how much energy I put into serving God and, you know, that my life could actually be over in five years. And so what, what, is, what does that encourage me to do? Well, it's encouraged me to double. We have more airtime than we ever had before, at least from the what does the Bible say um, uh, standpoint. We have... Um, now doubled our airtime. Between January and June, we did 96 episodes of broadcast, including the headliners. And so, you know why I kept that kind of schedule? It's because I realized that life is brief. And if we don't hurry up there and get the gospel out, then there's no telling what might happen. And you are the beneficiaries, we believe. So tonight, I would like to hear from the community. Is it a good thing or is it a bad thing? for us to present this information so that you can know what is going on with uh, individuals like Johnny Dyer. Now, I'm going to play this video. This is where we are, were. Just a moment before I unplug my computer. Let's listen to Mr. Dyer as I talk to him about his typo. Take a listen. Really? Who was yeah. that? Well, I'm just a local preacher in the area. Uh -huh. and are you saved, Johnny? I'm saved, yes. How do you know you're saved? Well, I looked at the Bible, uh -huh. and I found people in the New Testament after Jesus died who went through a process to be saved, and I did the same thing went they did. Went through a process. Huh? Right, right. Oh, my. I, I actually looked at the Scripture that they were told, uh -huh. and then I repeated what they did. Repeated? I repeated well, what, what they did. What did you repeat? Well, the first thing is I heard the gospel. They had to hear the gospel of Jesus. Now, I want to ask you tonight, is repeating what the, the uh, persons in the New Testament did, is that a good thing? I mean, he made fun of that, that we repeat what these individuals uh, did. Now, this is what Paul actually had, uh, had uh, Timothy do. He said in 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 17, 
For this cause I have sent you unto you Timotheus, who is my beloved son and faithful in the Lord, who shall bring you into remembrance of my ways, which be in Christ, as I teach everywhere in, in every church. Now what they did is they went around teaching what Paul had told them to teach. And the individuals that were hearing this would then repeat that. Now, is that a good thing? Well, look, 1 Corinthians 11, verse 1. Be you followers of me, even as I am a follower of Christ. Paul was a follower of Christ, and Christ said that you are to hear the gospel, and you are to believe it, and you are to be baptized. Paul said, I'm a follower of Christ. Be you a follower of Christ, as a follower of me as I am a follower of Christ. Well, Paul actually said that Jesus told that you should believe and be baptized in order to be saved. Well, guess what? That's what Paul did. Paul repeated in his own life what Jesus said to do uh, in, in uh, Mark 16, verse 15 and 16. So what we want to do is we want to see, well, what did he do? Well, look at this. When he tells his conversion account, the Bible says that he was told by a preacher named Ananias who was repeating what Peter said on the day of Pentecost, Arise and be baptized and wash away thy sins, calling on the name of the Lord. How does one call on the name of the Lord? Well, what you do is you repeat what was taught on the day of Pentecost. Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Acts 2.21. How did they call on the name of the Lord? Well, he told them what the Lord, who the Lord is. They get down to when they found out who the Lord is. Now they know who the Lord is. Let the house of Israel know assuredly that God had made the same Jesus whom you have crucified, both Lord and Christ. Now they know who the Lord is. And they say, men and brethren, what shall we do? They were pricked in their heart upon learning that Jesus was in fact the Christ. And they said, what shall we do? Well, here's what he told them to do in order to call on the name of the Lord. Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins. You shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Now let's think about this. Is this not the same thing that Jesus told the apostles in Mark, Matthew, and Luke? In Mark's account, he said, He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. In Luke's account, he says, Repentance and remission of sins shall be preached in His name in Jerusalem, beginning in Jerusalem. In Matthew, he said, uh, Teaching all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and Son and the Holy Ghost. Is this not what they were told to do? They were actually repeating what Jesus told them to do. And Ananias was repeating what he knew that the Apostle Peter told individuals to tell the persons who first asked that question. And now he's telling Saul of Tarsus the same thing. Arise and be baptized and wash away thy sins, calling on the name of the Lord. Now I said, I repeated what they did in the New Testament. Now he made fun of that. Let's listen to that again and let's continue to listen to what he says when I try to get him to tell us why he put this sinner's prayer in this book that is not in the Bible. All right, here we go. Right, right. Oh, my. I, I actually looked at the scripture that they were told, uh -huh. and then I repeated what they did. Repeated? I repeated well, what they did. What did you repeat? Well, the first thing is I heard the gospel. They had to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ. Uh -huh. Then they were told that they had to believe the gospel of Jesus Christ, that Jesus died and raised uh -huh. from the dead. Uh -huh. Then they ha were told they had to confess that. Uh -huh. How am I doing so far? Pretty good. Okay, they were told they had to repent of their past sins. Sure. All right, and then those same individuals that I'm reading about in the book of Acts, chapter 2, they were then told upon repenting they need to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of their sins. Mm -hmm. for the, for the, and they should receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Right, let me just ask you, do you have the, how do you know you're saved? Or do you say you're saved? I do say I'm saved. You, th you, think, you think you're going to heaven when you die? Absolutely. How do I know I'm saved? Folks, when you do what the Bible says, when you repeat what the Bible says, are you not then assured that you are in fact now saved? Acts 2.41 says, They that gladly received the word, they heard the gospel of Jesus Christ, they heard that they were going to have to repent and confess Jesus before men, and they were going to have to be baptized for the remission of their sins in His name. They gladly received that message and they were baptized. And the same day was added unto them about 3,000 souls. When these individuals received that message and they did it, the Bible says they were added to those individuals. Well, what are the added called in verse 47? Verse 41, they're added to the, the individuals. It says 3,000 were added unto them who had been baptized. What are the added called? Praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. Individuals who gladly received that word then were added to the church and they're called the saved. Why would I not be saved? Well, let's listen to this in its entirety. Absolutely. Oh, you do? Yes. Uh -huh. Yeah. 
Now, all right, let me, wait, wait a minute. I'm asking the question. Okay, fine. I'm asking the question. Okay. Do you have any evidence in your life that you're a Christian? Well, I have the Bible as my evidence. Huh? I have the Bible as the evidence. Is that all you got? Well, what else do I need? Uh-huh. Well, you're missing something. Okay. What? Okay. Do I have any evidence that I'm saved? Uh, what about like, did I say a sinner's prayer that's not in the Bible? He told the guy uh, on, uh, I believe it would be Friday, two days before he died, Johnny Dyer told this man that if he prayed this prayer, he would be saved. And then on Sunday, he preached him into heaven. Now, where's the evidence? He said, do I have any evidence that I'm saved? And I said, I have the Bible. He said, but do you have anything else? Anything else? What do I need besides the assurance that I get from God's Word and knowing that I have been obedient to what God's Word says and repeated what individuals in the New Testament did who are called the saved. Why can I not be assured that if God is going to save them that He would also save me when that's exactly what was preached? But yet He can say that a guy who is two days from his death can pray a prayer that's not in the Bible and then this guy be the judge on Sunday and say he went to heaven. How in the world have we reached this point? And individuals love it this way. They love the preachers to tell their relatives who have never lived any time in service to the Lord. They love their, the preachers to tell them that they're going to heaven after they lived a reprobate life. It makes everybody feel good. As in Jeremiah's days, in Jeremiah 531, the people love to have it so. But my friends, are you listening to this? Can you... Can you be hoodwinked by this? What is, it? what is it? What is it? The witness of the Spirit of God and the evidence that is spelled out, first of all, in the, first, in the book of 1 John, that, that tells in many places there, His Spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we're the children of God. Not one single passage in 1 John says that. You have to go to Romans 8, 16 to hear that. He said in, in 1 John, it's spelled out that the Spirit bears witness with our, our spirit that we're the children of God. Folks, the way the Spirit bears witness is through the Spirit's Word. The Spirit had the apostles to write this stuff down. 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 21 and 20, uh, 20 and 21. These individuals wrote this information down as the Holy Spirit moved them. And we read what the Spirit said to do to be saved. And our spirit knows that we have done that. And that's the Spirit of God bearing witness with our spirit that we're children of God. My spirit knows that I have done what the Spirit of God inspired Peter to say on the day of Pentecost. My spirit knows that it's done what he told uh, Mark to write in Mark 16, 15. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. My spirit knows, Luke 4, uh, 24, 46, that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name beginning at Jerusalem. My spirit knows that I've believed. My spirit knows that I have repented. My spirit knows that I've been baptized in Jesus' name for the remission of my sins. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, Matthew chapter 28, verse 19. My spirit knows that the Holy Spirit put that in there for a plan of salvation. For everybody, every creature, he was told. Mark chapter 16, verse 15. Preach it to every creature. My spirit knows that I've done what the Holy Spirit says, but see, Mr. Dyer wants me to say a prayer that's not even in the Bible, and it negates Baptist doctrine anyway. If you're saved by faith only, why didn't he just ask the man on his deathbed, do you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and be done with it? If the man said yes, according to Baptist doctrine, he's saved. Baptists teach faith only. You're faith, saved by faith only. Uh, uh, Charles Stanley says, F John 3, 16, period, period. That's it. That's all you have to have in order to do Baptist doctrine. Now, here comes Johnny Dyer, and he brings in something that actually conflicts with known Baptist doctrine. Let's continue to listen. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Have you ever experienced that? Okay, now one I of those passages. You, I wonder if you have experienced that. One of those do passages, you know anything, yes. Do you know anything about a changed life? Yes, I do. Huh? What yes, do you I say do. Change? Do you I, have any love for... Do you have any love for the brethren? Do you really love yes. the Lord Jesus Christ? Yes. Are you a false prophet? No. Are you a false prophet? No. Are you one of those who are learn no. ever learning and never coming to the mind of But the I'll tell you this. Now, isn't a false prophet someone who says things that God never had them to say? Isn't that what a false prophet is? Isn't that what we established that a false prophet is? We established that a false prophet is actually an individual who prophesies falsely. In other words, says that God said something that God didn't say. Now, who is a false prophet according to what we've established tonight? Here is an individual who has actually presented a paper, 
a booklet that does not have a scriptural plan of salvation in it. And he wants to know, am I a false prophet? This is something I'm that talking, you gave out, I'm didn't you? I'm talking right now. I'm okay. Talking right. Do you have, are you one of those who's ever learning and never coming to the knowledge of the truth? I, I am learning. I hope you come to the knowledge of the okay. truth. Okay. Can you tell no, me the truth you, of this? Listen, you, this is something you, you handed out. Are you, I hope one day you come to the knowledge of the truth. That is in the scripture, and only the Spirit of God can show you that. I'm not, listen, I don't have anything to do. Didn't you hand this out? I don't have anything. I'm talking now. You you be quiet a minute. You be quiet. This says, this is a sinner's prayer. You be quiet. You be quiet right here and listen. Okay. You don't even have the witness of the Spirit of God in your own heart. Yes, I do. You, huh? The the Spirit of God. You didn't describe, you didn't describe any of that happening to you. You are one of those who's ever learning and never come to the knowledge of the truth. I did describe the Spirit. Only the Spirit of God can show you the truth. And I'm afraid you haven't even... I did. I don't even need to talk to you because I'm afraid you're one of those who will trample underfoot the glorious gospel. Well, you are like, give all you I want to give do... Give you not which is holy unto dogs, neither cast you your pearls before swine. I have talked to a preacher from that church, went into his home, to the Church of Christ, on the Ridgeway Road, sat down and talked with him. I know exactly what you've got to say. Now, I don't know if you heard that or not, but he just said that he went into the house of a preacher from the Church of Christ on Ridgeway Road. Now, listen, folks. He just admitted that he goes into the house of other preachers and talks to them. Listen to it again. Give you not which is holy unto dogs, neither cast you your pearls before swine. I have talked to a preacher from that church, went into his home, to the Church of Christ, on the Ridgeway Road, sat down and talked with him. I know exactly what you've got to say. I know what you're all about. All I want to do I is ask even, a question. I don't, even need, I don't even need to answer. Why, why did you put this, why why you put this brochure talk, out? I don't even need to talk to someone. Sinner's someone's prayer. Where is it? I don't it? have this discussed because we don't have this in common. I'm afraid you might be one of those who simply, if I give you the Word of God, I'm preaching to somebody as, as giving it to the Word. Listen, you already to gave this out. Swine. You gave this you out see, at I'm afraid I'm giving and I don't have anything to say to you. Where, I know what you teach where is because the I have talked with a, people, a person from your church there. I've okay. talked with somebody who, I mean, it's the Church of Christ on I the noticed, Ridgeway Road. I noticed and I, 25 and I went, pages. I went over these things with him, and I went over with a man who went to say, let me, let, me, let, me, let me tell you what you were doing. And you are like so many just like that man down that told me, he says, there's people in our own camp who disagree with one another. So I don't have, I'm afraid I'm talking to somebody who's like giving pearls unto dogs, so I'm not going to talk with But you. I'm saying that so for 25, I'm not, I'm, listen, I'm talking 25 now, pages. I'm not to interrupt me. I didn't you was, interrupt you. You were the one that's come to me with this, and I gave you what no, I No, I wanted right to know, there. on and page 26. You need to hear what I've said here On today. page 26, I you didn't you give a heard, scripture. I hope you have, I hope you understood what I've said to you today. On page 26. I'm I'm afraid I'm talking to somebody who, who is as me giving the gospel. Would you just give me a scripture here? here? Please just and give no, me a scripture. No, I'm, I'm telling you to listen to me because I don't have anything to say to say to you. Because Your I'm name is on this. You are somebody who's ever Your name is on to come this. to the knowledge of the truth. Mr. Dyer, you are ever your name. Now, folks, I stood at that man's window while he maligned me, called me a false teacher and all that stuff that I was trampling underfoot the gospel, glorious gospel of Christ, called me a swine, uh, he, if you could have seen him, he was poking me the whole time that he was talking and, and wouldn't let me hardly get a word in edgewise. So far, four minutes and 44 seconds. Now, how long does it take to give the scripture for the sinner's prayer? Now, I mean, honestly, folks, you heard that gentleman call up last night and say that he would take the sinner's prayer in a book by Johnny Dyer over the Bible any day. Can you believe that somebody said that? I've been there four minutes and 44 seconds trying to get this man to do one thing. All I needed from him was the scripture for the sinner's prayer. He went around every bush, up every road, down every rabbit trail, everything he could say derogatory to me, admitted that he had been in the home of a gospel preacher himself, talking with them, so don't get all riled up about me going to his house. He admitted that he went down to a guy named Graves' house who used to preach over at Ridgeway. And all of that, all of these stories, and we're not done yet, and he doesn't tell me the simple scripture for the sinner's prayer. What do you think is the issue here? Does he not have the sinner's prayer? Did he really not want to throw it in front of a swine like me? Did he really think that I was going to trample underfoot the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ? Or do you think today, folks, that he didn't have a scripture for that prayer? Now, I'm offering $1,000 for the scripture for that prayer. We offered one of his supporters who supports him more than he supports Jesus, $500. And he could give the other $500 to his buddy, Johnny Dyer. And we still, and we've had the phone lines open tonight for at least half the show, or will have by the time the show's over. And we have not had a single preacher 
Give us the sinner's prayer. You know why? Because it's not in the Bible. You made it up along with your denominational doctrines and your practices and your worship and all of that. See, it's made up. A horrible thing has taken place, Jeremiah said. The prophesies, prof, prophets prophesy falsely. And the people love to have it. Do you love to have it? Do you love being in the Baptist church that's not in this book? Do you love saying a sinner's prayer two days before you die that's not in this book? And have a preacher tell your family that you're in heaven? Let me tell you what. Let me tell you what really is going to take place. Have you ever read what takes place when a person comes to their senses after they die? I want you to notice what takes place when individuals come to their senses after they die. Here is a man who after he died, he became very, very smart. Look at him. This man died having not been obedient to God, and the Bible says that he is in torment. And notice what he said. I pray thee therefore, Father, that thou would send him to my father's house. I have five brethren, that he may testify in them, lest they come also into this place of torment. You see, people come to their senses when they die and they go to the wrong place. And they want to warn their brethren. Let me tell you tonight, folks, I am warning your brethren. I'm warning your family, do not listen to Johnny Dyer. He is telling you false things. I gave him four minutes and 44 seconds of our valuable time, and we've let you listen to it. We're going to let you listen to the rest of it. Take a listen. Your name is on and this. Come to the knowledge of truth. And my prayer is that you will come to the knowledge your of the truth. Your name is on this, and, and you didn't that put you'll your come scripture to the truth, but you'll on the sinner's prayer. Only the Spirit of God can give it to you, but as long as you you got your own little I religious activity, I would be satisfied. Activity, a little religious activity that you're going through with here, you're blinding, you're blocking off the listen, Spirit of God there. Mr. Dyer. That changes a person's heart I would life. be satisfied. And I'm afraid that you haven't had that change in life, so I don't have anything to say to you. I would I've be already satisfied. talked to people like you and I don't need to talk to you because we disagree. Would I know you just what, give me a scripture? I know, I know we disagree. I Sinner's disagree prayer. with you so I don't have anything to talk to you about. prayer. Would you just give me a scripture just for like that? like I talked to Jehovah's Witness, I talked to the Mormons. I don't have anything in common. I just give them a message. You, like a, this and booklet. you are sort of like being in one of those con congregations. I'm sorry about so that. So I simply do not have this. Oh, Sinner's prayer. prayer. And I give, them, I give them a message. I got a message Here's for you your, and I've given you the message today. Sinner's prayer. I give them a message and then I give you a message and I give them, and they go their way, and I know what I believe. I've talked about, I know your doctrine, I know what you believe, and I know what you want to say about that. I just want you There's to give no me a scripture. There's no need for me to say anything, because I know what you're going to say. I know what you think. I know your people. I know your, your, your doctrine. I know what you teach. I have sat down in the literal home, went to preach. I used to, when I was a young Christian, I would go across town just to argue with somebody. I've gotten away some of that. So I wound up at the Church of Christ when he was on the Ridgeway Road. I wound up in his home. Maybe it was Gravely. I'm not sure if that was him. I wound up in his home, sat down to school. I knew those things. I was fighting to learn. I was just fighting on because I thought I knew something. But you see, you don't have the spirit. My witness of spirit don't witness with your spirit. I don't have anything to say. I don't discuss things with somebody like that. I don't discuss Even things. Even though you put this I out? I don't discuss things with people that are like giving the, that which is holy unto dogs. You fall into that category. But I just wanted the scripture for the sinner's prayer. And he rolled up his window, called me a dog, rolled up his window and left six minutes and 40 seconds into a discussion where all I wanted, I would not have kept him there over 10 seconds if he had just given me the sinner's prayer. Now, folks, you heard that. Did you hear this guy say he used to argue with everybody when he was a young preacher? But he's given that up now. You know why? He's found something that's not in the Bible that everybody loves. Why, there's nobody that will argue with you if you'll tell their loved ones that they're going to heaven after having lived a complete life of disobedience up to the second day before they die and the preacher Dyer comes in and says, pray this prayer, it's not in the Bible. What if the man had said, well, where's that, Bi that in the Bible, preacher Dyer? Well, we've already heard from people all over this area that it's not in the Bible. Prince Sinner's prayer is not in the Bible. What if he'd said, where is that? He would've, what would he have said? Would he call him a dog? Would he call him a swine? Trample underfoot the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ? I know what kind of person you are. My spirit doesn't agree with you. You just go on and don't say the sinner's prayer then and die and go to hell. Well, I tell you what, you go ahead and say the sinner's prayer and you'll die and go to hell. And when you're in torment, you will come to your senses, but it'll be too late. And you know what? Your friends in the church of Christ are trying to make sure that it's not too late for you nor any of your relatives because we're willing to tell you a word from the Lord. Tomorrow night, as we said, the tent will be up. We've got a few minutes here, and we're going to stop early so that we can let the guys get on and get their stuff set up. 
Uh, Mark McManus and Caleb Robertson will be coming on, and they're going to be discussing the Pentecostal dilemma that's associated with Connie Earls and his members who actually found out that they've been taught falsely as well. Always ask for a word from the Lord, and you'll get what does the Bible say. God bless you. Come out to the tent tomorrow night at 7. Good night. In the Church of Christ,